This morning I'll be reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are very excited for next Sunday. Uh, It's Pentecost Sunday, which is uh, the Sunday we celebrate the birthday of the church when 120 uh, disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and the movement of God Uh, spread throughout uh, Jerusalem and beyond, and uh, one of the ways we're going to celebrate that is uh, at our middle service. Uh, We'll have a shortened service that day, but uh, we invite everyone to come and join us in our celebration of the completion of the the first portion of phase one of our uh, remodeling projects, and uh, we're excited about how they all turned out, and so we just want to have a day where we recognize uh, the contractors and others who who, who worked on the project and uh, also, just thank our donors and all who uh, supported us. And, and, and on a great day, when you celebrate the birthday of the church, it's a good day to celebrate and give thanks to God. So uh, and we'll start about 1015 and end about 1045. And, you know, as Methodists, we always have a little bit of food there, too. So you know how that works. So uh, but, uh, we look forward to a great day of, uh, of celebrating the ho- power of God's Holy Spirit uh, together. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your presence with us and the power of your word and in the journey that we have taken to be no longer strangers. You call us to be your church, to be your body. And we pray that uh, through this series, uh, we have opened our hearts and minds to the power of your spirit of how we live in community and how we uh, faithfully live as your people together. So speak to us this day as we uh, seek to uh, understand more fully the ways we are to live our lives in relationship with you. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, obviously today we, uh, we are grateful for the gift of the women who have guided us in our lives, and we pause to celebrate that, and uh, in our and in a lot of cases, moms and other women have taught us a lot about our, our lives. And uh, I came across this piece that says, My mother taught me religion. And the way that we, this person knew that was his mom said, You better pray that that comes out of the carpet. My mother taught me medicine. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they will freeze that way. Anybody ever had your mom? Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, My mother taught me to be a contortionist. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. If you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. My mother taught me genetics. You are just like your father. My mother taught me logic. Because I said so, that's why. Because I said so, that's why. We uh, have been on a journey together through the book of Ephesians. Uh, This particular letter was written by Paul uh, to a church that he had founded. And uh, in this particular season, you know, he writes letters as he finds and finds uh, and stays in a place, settles and creates a church community, and then he leaves and goes and started another congregation somewhere else. But he would always write back when he would hear about how things were going. And on this particular uh, church at Ephesus, there were others who were coming and saying how this is how you should uh, be more Jewish or be more 
uh, faithful to how we follow God, and, and he was concerned about that. And so the first three chapters, we looked at um, how amazing and how much God loves us, that it's not so much about the works or the things that we do, but it's more on how God loves us and the power of God's grace in our lives. Uh, we talked about how we each have been given gifts and abilities to be a part of the community of faith, that one of the the strengths of the idea of God of having a church is that we are all gifted in different ways and all those gifts are bound together in unity and those gifts are used in a variety of ways to enhance and strengthen the body of Christ as the mission agent into the world. These last couple of chapters have been focused, so how do we live that way? How does my everyday life as a follower and disciple of Christ be representative of how we live in, in the world. And so we've been, we've been focused on, on those uh, ways of saying, how do we live as no longer strangers, but how do we live, a, and the keys to living as a, a faith community, as a church. We, uh, we, first thing that he says is that we are to be careful about how we live. Because for Paul, he's reminded that many people, we watch one another. We see if people who say, this is how I live, this is who I follow, and the question is, do we actually live that out every day? Um, and, and so he's saying, so be careful, live wisely. Uh, in fact, the other word that uh, I read in one of the, the, the uh, scriptures was the word prudent, or using prudence. Now, when I think of the word prudent, uh, I remember President George Bush the first president, would use that word quite often, and in fact, if you remember, uh, on Saturday Night Live, Dana Carvey would use, he, he was a guy who would do the impressions, and he said, he would always say, not going to do it, going to be prudent, not going to do it, going to be prudent. Well, that was the first time I'd really, you know, thought about the word prudent, and so, of course, you have to look it up and uh, understand what that means, and prudence means acting with or sharing care and thought for the future. Prudence means acting with or showing care and thought for the future. Paul is saying, do not just live on the whims of our emotions. Don't just follow in the whims of those in the world, but that we are to stay wise in the ways that we focus on the ways of God and how the powerful, transforming gift of God's love has given us each a gift and that we use those gifts to build up the body of Christ. We live transformed lives that change us. I was reading about Clarence Jordan, who was a, uh, a preacher in the South who tried to create a, a community, a kingdom community called Koinonia Farms. And it was, a, it was a community in the 60s and 70s that tried to have a place where blacks and whites could live together. And obviously in that particular location in, in, in the South was not readily accepted and, and even accepted by church people. He says he remembers his call to ministry when he was about eight years old. And he said he remembered that um, as an eight-year-old, his parents had taught him that no matter what race anybody is or whatever their, their, the way they look or the way they are, we are to treat everybody the same. And yet he remembers many church people and the ways that they treated others poorly. And he was kind of trying to say, how do, I, how do we put that together? If we're to be followers and disciples of Christ, how do we... How do we not live that way every day? It, it, it's a, not an easy path in life. And yet, Paul says, be careful. Be aware. Be prudent. Be wise in how you live your life every day. In the words you say. The ways you act. The ways we live. Because if we are truly living a transformed life of God, we will seek the higher ways of God's love. He goes on then, so we need to take the opportunity. Now for Paul, he believed that Jesus was coming back pretty quickly. And of course, that didn't happen. And, but for him, he was saying the time is short. And so we, we need to bear witness to the power of God's love to the whole world. Hence, his missionary pro process was that he would again go and and create a foundation for a church community of Christians. And then after a couple of years, he had moved to the next major metropolitan area and do the same. 
he was casting a vision of saying, how do we uh, prepare ourselves and know ourselves as transformed people of God, but then that the mission of the church, the key of being a faithful community, is not just keeping it for ourselves, but literally giving ourselves away for others, giving ourselves away in missionary work, giving ourselves away in service and mission on behalf of Jesus. Because it's there that we then allow others to experience and know the transforming love of God. So one of the keys that he challenges us to continually think about as a, as a church, as a congregation, that it's not about us. We have experienced that transforming power of the Holy Spirit. It, it's really about those outside. And we've talked about how do we share our God story? How do we share the moments that God has touched our lives? And in doing so, in the ways that we live every day, we offer to the world on the way an example of how we can live in unity together. That even when we have differences, the differences don't separate us, but the differences are, are communicated and shared and visited with. And that we then experience and open ourselves to that transformation of God's love in our lives. You know, Paul lived a life uh, that was not easy. In fact, in 2 Corinthians, he talks about how he was beaten at least three or four times with a whip, 40 lashes. He was shipwrecked at least three times. He found himself hungry, cold. He found himself in deep trouble in prison. And yet, all through that, he said, my, my gift of knowing God in my life and knowing Jesus as my Savior brought him the greatest joy of life. And so all these setbacks and disappointments and moments of struggle and strain, they didn't mean anything to him. Because it was through those moments that he could truly shine and share the good news of God. That, in, that inner joy, that inner peace that Paul experienced gave him the opportunity, moved him to the place where he would bear witness to God's love in his life to anyone he would meet. So he was not bashful about or embarrassed to talk about his faith with others because he wanted others to know God as he has known God. And even in a life that's not easy, he wanted people to know that this was so important to him that he would do whatever it takes. He would live his life in whatever way God's called him so that he may truly demonstrate and open to the world the good news of Jesus who transforms each of our lives and helps us to live bound together as a community of faith. Lastly, he uh, said in this uh, passage that we should uh, always be filled with the Spirit, that there are two things that are important for a key to be a community of faith. One is prayer, and in, during the Lenten season, we focused on that 40 days of prayer, and the other is worship, that one of the key ingredients of truly uh, experiencing and knowing God in our lives is gathering with other Christians uh, to share in worship because it is worship that then fuels and inspires us to share the good news, to share our God story, to speak and to encourage and to strengthen others in their most difficult times. Um, Bishop, uh, Bishop Bez Bez uh, Desmond Tutu uh, wrote this about the meaning of worship, which I thought was very helpful. He said, my, in worship, what happens is my humanity, my personhood gets caught up with another's humanity, that we are bound together, that we belong in this bundle of life. A person is a person through other persons. I'm a human being because I belong. I participate. I share. We participate in a greater whole. One of my favorite phrases is, my heart is full. And I think that's what Paul is saying in this passage. And he's reminding us that our hearts are full when we are filled with thankfulness and with joy. When we live life in humility, in the ways that we celebrate the power of joy and thankfulness, we represent to a world a different image of the world. For many, the world is dark and uh, filled with a darkness, and yet we are the kingdom of God. We are the ones who bring light to the world. 
Jesus talks about being the salt of the world. He tells us to be the light of the world, just as Jesus is the light in our hearts and lives. In the same way, we are filled and blessed by God's Spirit to truly live as Spirit-filled people every day. We live with a total amazement about life every day. And all of us have had those miracle moments when we've seen things in our lives and, and we've said, wow, that, that's of God. That's of God. That's of God. That just amazes how we live and how we think and how we speak. A mother uh, once, uh, a person once took a, the third, the chapter 13, the love chapter of 1 Corinthians and, and kind of related it to this day of Mother's Day. And I just thought it was a great way to end our time of thinking about we're no longer strangers. We are people who live in a community to be the body of Christ. We worship together. We pray together. We give our, and offer ourselves and our gifts to God. And in doing so, we, we then are a body that doesn't look just within ourselves, but we are a body of people that seek the ways of God and to live the ways of God so that others may experience God more fully in their lives, especially those who are distant from God. May we be the tool and the instrument to bring people to know God more fully in their lives. Anyway, it goes like this. If I live in a house of spotless beauty with everything in its place, but have not love, I'm a housekeeper, not a homemaker. If I have time for waxing, polishing, and decorating achievements, but have not love, my children learn cleanliness, but not godliness. Love leaves the dust in search of a child's lack. Love smiles at the tiny fingerprints on a newly cleaned window. Love wipes away the tears before it wipes up the spilt milk. Love reprimands, reproves, and responsive. Love crawls with a baby, walks with a toddler, runs with a child, and stands aside to let the youth walk into adulthood. Love is the key that opens salvation's message to a child's heart. Before I became a mother, I took glory in my house of perfection. But now I glory in God's perfection of my child. As a mother, there is much I must teach my child. As a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ, there is much that we must teach our children. But the greatest gift we can teach is love. Let us pray. Lord, we uh, confess that there are times when we are grumpy there are times when uh, we lose sight of what it truly means to be your disciple. <clears throat> but we pray today that as we have journeyed together that you remind us that the ethic of love, the power of love, the source of love for our lives is you. Help us to incorporate the power of that love through our life of prayer, through our life of worship, and through our lives of gratitude. Help us to truly be living as your disciples in the world, a, a transformed life so that we can proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God has come today. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Our uh, hymn of commitment today is Joyful, Joyful, We Are Adore Thee. Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us stand and sing together. It's number 89 in your hymnal. Uh, the words are also on the screen. Joyful, joyful, we adore.